It's time for the show about the people and the places of the Carolinas with the occasional visitors. In addition to hosting the award-winning syndicated TV show Life in the Carolinas, Carl White writes a weekly syndicated column and now hosts this weekly show, the Life in the Carolinas podcast. Now you can hear the story about the stories. And now here's your host, Carl White. Welcome to this special edition of Life in the Carolinas podcast. We're here with a good friend, Wayne Taylor. Wayne, how are you? Oh, I'm great, Carl. How are you? I'm doing great. I know you. We've known each other for years. But for those who don't, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Well, I grew up in Maiden, North Carolina and uh, ran off to the Navy when I was about 22 and wound up as a Navy musician and did that for a few years, ran off to California and uh, did college for a while and came back to North Carolina and decided to join the Navy again. So in 1987, I joined the uh, U.S. Navy Band in Washington, D.C. Right. Did that for uh, 21 years. Wow. 21 years and played for some very important people. Wayne, when uh, you and I talked a few days ago, you were telling me about your <clears throat> your adventures uh, not only in cutting some new uh, tracks, but but your educational endeavors. Right. Yeah. I. Uh, you know, it's kind of late in life, but I started college again, and uh, it's online with Berkeley School of Music in Boston, right. and uh, learning to be a recording engineer. I just think that's incredible because you, you have, and I, and I wanted us to talk about that for a few moments today. We've talked over the years. You've been on the TV show, and and we've done stage shows together. And uh, I've really developed a great appreciation for your history and your work, and and the way you're able to make things happen. But learning education has been a, a profound part of your life from a young age. And even now, you have to you have to keep uh, keep that mind active. And that's Mm -hmm. uh, that's important to me, you know, and and recording is something I've always wanted to do. And I've heard about the Berkeley School of Music for years. I mean, everybody that that goes through that program just raves about what a great program it is. Right. uh, So I looked into it and found the the uh, recording and. Signed up and and here here we go again. You know? <laughs> and now this is all is is coming together because you've built your own studio, right? Right. Yes. When I when I bought my home there in Conover, it, there was a sixty five by forty building in the back, mm-hmm. and a friend of mine, Ron Owen B, says, "You know, you need to make a recording studio in here." Uh, and I I did that very thing. So, so Ron was the inspiration. He was, and uh, he he passed away a, a few years back. That's it's right. a sad thing, but um, yeah, he put that bug in my ear, and and I certainly built a, a nice studio. I got a twenty by twelve control room, and uh, built three soundproof booths, uh, and then. Got all the equipment, and and so I'm off and running. So you're 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 set up, and I think what's uh, worth talking about is you you didn't do this to record your first album. You didn't do this to record your first song because you've been putting music out for how many years now? Oh, I guess my first CD was '91 uh, with Bill Emerson. Right. We did Emerson and Taylor, Appaloosa, and, um, and since then I've probably recorded 15 cds right and, and worked with some great people in doing that oh sure i had some some very fine uh when when bill and i did the appaloosa cd we had mike aldridge and uh wyatt rice jimmy goodrow and, wow. and just some uh ricky simpkins some fabulous bluegrass musicians and so uh yeah and had dan tominski the guy that sang on uh oh brother where art thou he he did the harmony Oh, nice. Uh, it's just nice. I mean, you couldn't pick a better bunch from back then, you know. Yeah. Well, Wayne, that's that's an exciting part of your story. And when you blend that with the military, so for those who don't know that story, uh, your military exploits and, and adventures, because they mm-hmm. truly were adventures, weren't they? Oh, they sure were, yes. Yeah. Let's talk about some of those things that you were able to do in the military as it relates to your music. Well, um we, we did so many different things. Uh, 
we could we could play uh, just just some school elementary school somewhere one day, and the next day we could be at the White House playing for the president <laughs> and all of Congress out there. Congressional barbecue, we'd be out out on the lawn playing for that, and and you play with uh, so many uh, artists. Uh, great, great artist. I mean, Chet Atkins was there, Allison Krauss, Trisha Yearwood. We played with Alabama there once, The Sleep at the Wheel, Ali Greenwood, all the astronauts that, that were still living at the time. Wow. And um, So what was that like for you personally? Because I've heard some of these stories before, but I don't think we've we've actually taken this and broken it down because, you know, we've, we've been on TV, so you don't have that much time. But here we've got a little bit more time. Talk about those, you know, what that meant to Wayne Taylor, the person, just you as an individual. Well, I mean, I just, I grew up in a small town and, mm-hmm. and never thought I'd, I mean, I'd be standing on the White House lawn looking at the White <laughs> House thing. I cannot believe I'm here. I just, it's just the strangest thing. But right. um, if, if I think if if somebody works at something hard enough, you know, right. and you get, get proficient at it, you never know where, where it will lead. Mm. And you've certainly had it lead you in many places. Yes, it certainly did. Yeah. yeah. We wound up going to China and Sweden and Halifax, Nova Scotia, and just, I don't know. A lot of different places. Right. Wow. Wow. So that was in the military. And then, of course, after the military, your your music career continued to go, and you still traveled. Right. We started uh, Wayne Taylor in Appaloosa, my good friend Emery Lester. And uh, so we started that bluegrass band and played a lot of places around. We went to California and played out there and played, uh, I don't know, last year we went to Scotland and Ireland, mm-hmm. played over there, and had right. a great little tour. So when you when you think about the world of music as it is now, and with all of its evolution, a resurgence of certain types of things, I think an appreciation for mountain music and bluegrass music, where do you see bluegrass music as it stands now? Well, it's it has... Uh, it's outside the this envelope a little bit now, you know. I mean, p- people are doing more progressive things, but they're also going back, uh, trying to be as authentic as they can, mm. you know. So it's there's there's a big wide spectrum of bluegrass. Are you finding that that the audience is, is it growing? Are you seeing more people? Oh sure, okay. yeah. When when you get progressive with it, you know, you bring in a whole new audience. Mm. Um, and it's um, it, it's good for the for the bluegrass. I think. Right. I right. think it's good. And when you listen to, um, say XM Radio, uh, Bluegrass Junction, they have different facets of it. They have traditional with Chris Jones, and they have Ned Lubrecki who does the real progressive stuff. Oh, sure, sure. And then you have Dale McCurry who gets on there, and he's the great bluegrass artist. You know, everybody knows Dale, and he brings in his favorite songs, which oh, can sure. be anything from Billy Strings doing the uh, the the real progressive stuff uh, to some very traditional billy's incredible isn't he billy's an amazing he's done a lot for i mean i'm a guitar player and when i see him play it just inspires me to to pick up my axe and start chopping away at it you know i went down a, a, a rabbit hole someone sent me one of his videos and i don't know some time ago and and i didn't know billy and and i and i watched it and i was like what <laughs> i mean he just his look you know and i yeah. i was loving what i was seeing because here's this young guy with long hair and tattoos and he's he's just really killing it i mean he was really putting on a great show well and and he's so um he's so down to earth it, yes i've seen uh, uh clips of him when he's talking about you know playing with his dad he said mm-hmm. you know when i was six years old my dad was playing um playing a song and and i just never could get to the rhythm i was just thinking you know you you strum four times and then you change chords and then i never could get it but then i just stopped and i'm six years old sitting here playing with my dad and 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 i just stopped and i listened and i heard where the chords went and i finally got it you know and Mm. and my dad grabbed me by my little six-year-old hand and 
and gave me a little squeeze. And <laughs> he said, that's why I play bluegrass music. Wow. Wow. Just had a big impact on him. But he was able to hear. And that's very important in, in, in music is just being able to listen, listen around you and see where the chords are going. And it's not, not always right on the beat. You know, you just have to listen and catch on and remember where it went and, and, and go with it. I think that's interesting because you come from a background of, of edu- you, you had your musical education. Yes. And y- your ideas and, and the way you approach music is certainly influenced. And here's this six-year-old kid who didn't have any of that. Right. But he was probably utilizing some of the same techniques that you've learned how to use mm-hmm. as well. Oh, well, he's right? gifted. Yeah, and when you start, I started off by ear the same way okay. he did. You know, mm-hmm. I was, my first formal training was, uh, you know, I was 20-some years old. And I went through the School of Music in Little Creek, Virginia. Mm. And I couldn't tell you where Middle C was on the piano. I had no idea. Right. But I went through ear training and percussion and how to read music and music theory and all that stuff. And that, that's when, you know, if you can combine those two things together, you know, the technical aspect of right. it and then the natural being able to hear things. So you combine those and I think uh, that, that's when the light switches on and you, you get it figured out. And then that's what certainly prepared you to 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 be someone who could who could be the leader of the navy band right well <laughs> was that the, part of it the country and bluegrass band right. anyway right well the country part right right and bluegrass so so there you were you've 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 got these uh, a married of experiences now uh what's life like now for you Wayne? i i'm telling you what i'm loving life right i just i'm just glad to be alive I mean, with this pandemic going around, and you see people uh, getting sick all around. It's a sad thing, but I know we'll get through it. But right now, um, when you have to stay at home, I'm taking advantage of it. I'm going to go to school online and and try to stay busy while I'm at home. Try to ride my bike, you know, every other day or every day mm-hmm. as much as I can and play golf. You still have that big uh, fat tire? The big bike? fat boy. Yeah, they call <laughs> it the fat boy. It has a four-inch right. tire on it. All right. So what's the advantage for that for that bike? Well, uh, when you're riding down the road and you see a car coming, getting close to you, you right. just kind of go off in the side ditch and you don't flip over those big oh. tires. It's, <laughs> it's like mud dobbing. You, know? okay. you, you can go out through the side ditch and you'll, you'll be okay. All right. Great. I thought you were going to say they're so big. You just, <laughs> you just take the car head on. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I try not to do that. <laughs> yeah. That's, I'm glad you don't. That's, mm. that's a good thing. So music is, uh, obviously the, it's, it's a complicated time, uh, of being able to play for an audience now too, isn't it? It is, yeah. A lot of people are are going online, you know, right. doing their doing their thing and videoing it and putting it out. But right. Still more fun to have a little audience there. Yeah, sure. So you're basically taking this time to to get some further your education, right? To do yeah. some more creative work. Have you got new songs in the works? Yes, uh, I started uh, doing a little co-writing with David Parker, and okay. uh, we put a couple songs out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Train, 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 and Old Memories. And it'll be, uh, it's actually on Airplay Direct right now. Okay. And it's on CD Baby. Right. So people people can find it there. Right. And we hope to put it on the website here real soon. Yeah. As soon as I get to go. the house, I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll send it on to you. There you go. Well, let's talk about, let's talk about the, you know, those songs. And, and I always think the anatomy of a song is very interesting. In other words, what what was the idea for the song, and how did it come to be? So talk about your two new songs. Well, uh, David Parker, he's an interesting guy. You know, he's a well-read person, very smart guy. And he started uh, this song, uh, and it wasn't Train, Train, Train. It's a story about a fella who who catches his girl with this other guy and Mm -hmm. it's kind of back in the old days you know when they had posses that used to chase crooks around and right so um and the the story goes he kind of got upset over those two being (laughs) together and he put an end to that and now he's running from the posse and so 
he's hearing a train off in the distance and so his idea is jumping this train and getting uh, away right so and if he doesn't it's going to be uh curtains for him yeah so he's got to get on that train he has to hit that train <laughs> and it's it's like mm. so once again a little a little love story gone awry a uh-huh. little, little murder and mayhem <laughs> sure enough <laughs> gotta yeah. get away and uh and we have some great fiddle work and mandolin work uh uh-huh. on there and uh yeah real happy with the way that turned out yeah. nice and what's the next song old memories david mm-hmm. uh david wrote this one and it's about you know when we were kids he had baseball carts scattered everywhere and mm-hmm. and it's just an old memory you know and if he still had those baseball cards he could be a millionaire today but but they're gone. Oh, we used to use them for, <laughs> we used to put them on the bicycle spokes, you know, on the sides oh, sure with, with clothes pins and it makes some noise. awful noise. Right. You'd think it's like a car engine or something. Right, but right. Wow. That could have been a, a Mickey Mantle card or something. Just chopping it all to pieces with your spokes. That's <laughs> not a very smart <laughs> thing to do. But it was a thing of the moment, wasn't it? It was. It was, I, but you, you just don't, don't know what's going to happen with yeah. things. I, I guess that's why people are hoarders. You know, they just keep stuff. They never know. It might be expensive one day. Yeah, I guess I guess maybe you're right. But I think that, that song, the, the notion of it speaks to nostalgia, doesn't right. it? Right, yeah. Just, uh, just those old memories are something you just, uh, they'll never go away. They're always with you. Old memories are... Something that I think a lot of great songs are, are made of, mm-hmm. right? Influenced by at least, I know during uh, a time where you can't travel as much, you know, where your uh, schedule has been changed, you know, while we're working on other things. I find myself going back and thinking about family and mom mm-hmm. and dad. And uh, this year we had uh, the immersion of brood number nine of the cicadas, 17 year cicadas, millions of them came out. Just yes, mm-hmm. this incredible number of these little creatures. And, and uh, you know, I began to remember, you know, my grandfather, I remembered a, an immersion before and I, uh, you know, the idea that, oh, maybe they'd be good for fishing. Well, they really didn't seem to be <laughs> no, great for fish, fishing. Fish don't care about those. Yeah, right? <laughs> I, well, I, I don't remember that they did. So, But it's funny that the things that when we're going through difficult times in, in life, in society, how that oftentimes our good memories are what we have to give us a little grounding again, right? I think so. It, it's... Uh I like to stay positive as much as I can, right. you know, just deal in the, in the here and now and not, not worry so much about what might be right. You know, when you look at your music and your first degree in music, music therapy, right? Right. Yes. That whole notion of, of music being something that, that calms us down, that, that helps us. Right. Uh, Kind of break that down for a moment. Well, talk music, about that. Um, music is used as a tool in, in music therapy to help people bring about positive change. And um, you, it, it creates emotion. It can create happy, sad. Right. So it's... Um, it's important that we have something like that. And as a musician, if, if I could just, I mean, I've become pretty fond of the banjo. It's a, it's a relaxing instrument. Mm. It really is. I mean, I can sit down with that thing and, and just play without finger picks, just, just play songs that I know, and, and it just puts me in a different frame of mind. So it literally can take you from maybe not having the best of days to where you're actually sure okay i'll, I'll get lost in it just mm. totally it's like going to see a good movie you know you right. see a movie for two hours you're totally lost mm. in what's going on outside that theater and it's the same thing with with uh, an instrument mm. or say it can ha- it can be singing playing the guitar piano or whatever you just get lost in it and and the you don't worry about what's going on outside or what's, what's going to happen tomorrow 
or what's happened in the past. You know, it just really takes you in a good place. So, Wayne, do you contend that that those moments when we get lost in music, those moments where we're distracted from the troubles of the world, does that give us a time to, does, I mean, does it give us a time to heal just a little bit? Or oh, just, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, anytime uh, it, you take stress away, because uh, stress will break you in half. Right. It certainly can. I mean, I've known that. Uh, I've actually had it happen to me, you know. Well, I was so uh, driven by stress that I got sick and had an operation, and it just wow. And I know it was all due to stress. Mm. So I try to do what I can to to keep the stress away. You're always smiling on stage. <laughs> and, you know, when you're leading the band, or you're performing. Uh, I mean, I've seen you close your eyes sometimes, but you, you, you have that perpetual smile. Is, is that genuine? Well, um, I, it must be because mm-hmm. sometimes I don't even know I'm doing it. I'm just right. glad, I'm glad to be where I am. Right. You know, especially performing. I just, I guess I was cut out to do that. Right. So the music, so the music makes you happy you're not aware that you're smiling but it's doing its magic on you most musicians i play with i can look at them and think of something funny or stupid that they <laughs> did and it'll make me laugh or something that they said that is right. just so ridiculous because musicians have a, a different way of looking at life i think <laughs> right and and you know, I could just look over at somebody and think, good Lord, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> <laughs> or or did that. And the right, same right. goes for me, too, because right, we're right. all nuts, you know. Just right. some people show it more than others. Sure. But maybe that's part of what keeps you uh, yeah. balanced, right? <laughs> I try. Remember remember at the Don Gibson Theater and when the Moore brothers were there mm-hmm. and, and, you know, the, the youngest one? You were there. You Isaac, were yeah. You remember Isaac, and the guitar was as big as he was. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And that. now he's uh, he's grown oh, up. He's I a, know. a big lad. Following following their careers and watching their evolution, and it's the music that makes them And you know, too. Jake, his older brother, Jake, is. Yeah. Uh, I think he's up for a Grammy for something that he did, and he's been going to Berkeley School of Music as right. well. So he's your classmate. Not really. Kind of. <laughs> I, I'm doing recording. I think he's right. doing music business. Yeah, sure. Well, that's, that's learning the business yeah. because those those kids are very talented. Incredibly, I think that's where Liam Purcell is too. Mm-hmm. I think he's at Berkeley as well. Well, that's that's where they need to go. That's yeah. a great school. Yeah, that's great. Well, Wayne, as we as we look at you know the world of music now, and and certainly in the Carolinas, we have an abundance of talent. We have people that uh, are accustomed to being on the stage and entertaining every single week, Mm -hmm. often most of the days of the week. And now that that's not happening and we are doing things uh, online, we're doing things a little bit differently, but still yet there's some creativity, some great creativity that's being utilized now and being born. Do you imagine that as we go through this scenario and come on the other side and everybody's back to their schedule, that there will be some great things that would have, that have, that will have come from this experience. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, just w- when you have downtime, that's the time to keep busy and keep active and keep right. working. And it's actually uh, a blessing in some ways mm. because you have to go inward. You have right. to, you have to stay in the house. You have to stay at home and uh, I think that's that can uh, create some nice creativity, you know. Right, right. Just by just by having that time to not be completely distracted. Because being on the road all the time is very distracting, right? right. Mm-hmm. You can't really spend a lot of time making new things because you're delivering what you've already made. Right. right, yeah. So hopefully we will have some great new stuff. Well, I'll keep working on that CD and try to get the whole thing completed. We have two songs. We're putting them out one song right. at a time. That's right. Wayne, I, I, I really wanted to spend some time with you to catch up with you on the podcast because the time does go by so quick. And uh, I've 
thoroughly enjoyed getting to know you over the years and following your career. And and I was so excited when you shared with me that you were actually doing some more educational endeavors and and putting out putting out music now and just continuing to move forward and uh, i think you're a great example for people in the music world and just creative people in general and knowing that a good smile is a good thing Mm -hmm. and even if you are laughing at your buddy for doing something (laughs) silly (laughs) all right wayne we're going to listen to a couple of your new tunes all right all right thank you carl thanks wayne montgomery alabama in the hot july sunshine Piney woods so deep You could smell the turpentine I'm the Mississippi Black dirt Red North Georgia clay I'm the memories That make you What you are today A dirt road Or a freight train When she rattles down the line Chevy short bed 1949 The girl who broke your heart When her family moved away Or that old silver tone guitar Daddy used to play Look around, you might see him following along Listen, you might hear him singing old Graham Parsons' song. Baseball cards and model cars your mama threw away might be worth a million dollars if you had them back today. Listen, you might hear him singing one of Hank's old songs. Makes no difference where you go, they're never far away. Thanks for listening to the Life in the Carolinas podcast. If you enjoyed your time with us, please visit the show's website at lifeinthecarolinas.com. Join our mailing list and we'll keep you updated every week on what we have coming up and other interesting things around the Carolinas. We value you as a podcast subscriber. We'll see you next week. And remember what Carl says, it's never a bad time for a good story.